Traditionally, American retirement policy has been envisioned as a three-legged stool. One leg of the stool is Social Security, the public transfer program from current workers to retired workers, according to a defined benefit schedule. Uh, the second leg of the stool, from the 1950s up until the present, has been employer pensions. Uh, in the past, these tended to be defined benefit pensions in which the risk lay with the employer. Uh, in recent decades, employers have been abandoning those in favor of defined contribution pensions, uh, particularly 401ks, in which the risk is shifted to the individual. And the final leg of the tripod of retirement security, if you want to use that metaphor, uh, is private savings, which for most people uh, it consists of the value of their home. Uh, which they have to share in retirement or uh, take out a reverse uh, mortgage on it uh, in order to have any kind of uh, liquid assets at all uh, in their old age. What we've seen uh, even before the Great Recession is the decline of two of the three legs, uh, both the employer pensions in their old defined benefit form and their new 401k form, uh, and also private savings. Only about 50% of Americans have uh, private savings at all of, the, of any significance in their old age, and that's mostly locked up in the form of their houses. They have very little liquid wealth. Uh, so in a new policy proposal uh, uh, called Expanded Social Security, my co-authors Stephen Hill, Robert Hilton Smith, Joshua Friedman, and I propose building on what succeeds and instead of trying to uh, prop up or uh, expand these failing rotting legs of the retirement security tripod uh, to build on what works and expand social security. Well, social security is superior to tax-favored private savings uh, for a couple of reasons. For one thing, the risk lies with the government. Uh, that is, the government in the year 2030 or 2040 or 2050 uh, has the obligation uh, to make the promised uh, benefit payments to individuals. Uh, at the same time, the government has more of an ability to do so uh, than either individual employers or uh, the stock market itself. Uh, the government is more likely to be able to collect taxes, both payroll taxes and, if necessary, other taxes, a generation or two from now, uh, than an individual is to retire uh, at the moment there's a uh, bull market rather than a bear market. Well, for you, uh, it replaces savings. Uh, you know, to a certain extent, we've bought into this mythology that savings is good in itself. Savings and insurance have always been in tension, both uh, uh, private insurance and social insurance, like Social Security and, and Medicare. The point of insurance is that you do not need to hoard money in advance. Uh, people are paying into the program now. Other people are withdrawing from the program. Uh, that's true, for example, in annuities. Uh, the money in the annuity is not money that you really set aside that's been in a bank vault somewhere. It's, it's what younger people are now uh, paying in as you withdraw it. Uh, the same is true with social insurance, uh, like Social Security, except it's just much more secure uh, because you have the full faith and credit of the government behind it rather than a particular private uh, uh, investment company or uh, bank which may or may not be around uh, when you need it. Uh, so w when it comes to both risk and uh, certainty, uh, social security and similar so 